Wise man once said that a man with a briefcase is more dangerous than a man with a gun. I trust everything went according to plan. We have a new case. We might make rent this month. They say good things come to those who eat. It's more than enough for you have No. <laughs> yeah, boy. My kind of client. But even good things aren't always what they seem. This is Emmanuel. Yeah, that's the man. What happened, you know him? People, that's Randolph Shaw. Sure. When you was ruthless and corrupted businessmen, they have me. Shaw sure is a dead man. Conrad, money is not a problem. Drugs, kidnapping, straight up the white collar crime. Mr. Shaw. Sure. This man have a foot in everything. You try to blackmail your way into this operation, and then you have the nerve to ask for more time? Sure, I always receive no weakness. Sure, I always steal. Or you get set up. Why well, don't talk about you taking the man gun? Where do you go that part for? Which is chill. Chill! Rass is your shit when you get we killed today, right? Right? As a matter of fact, I'm closing a deal tonight. No game, Jen. Oh, my money. Oh, I swear I put that was uh, code red there by Joel Moss. We do apologize for the indiscretion there. Uh, usually it's edited out, but apologies, please, to everyone who's viewing right now. Joel Moss, the director, will be joining us very soon with Michelle, Henderson, Michelle Stevenson. <laughs> Stevenson. I'm thinking <laughs> of uh, Michael Henderson there. <laughs> and that's, of course, part of the uh, TT Film Festival. Which has gone virtual for this 2020 mm -hmm. installment for obvious reasons. Yes. And uh, we're excited to be speaking about that in a second. Yeah. Um, you know, and... You know, when I got to go to the film festival in 2018, I believe yes. it was my first time ever going yeah. and being able to see local films and, you know, films mm -hmm. from the diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora, that is. And for and, some uh, people, that's the only place that they can get to see Yeah, some that's of these right. Films. And, and yeah. of one of them, one I really enjoyed. I mean, yeah. you could, I, I'll big you up a little bit, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, Hero. Oh, Hero okay. was the one I that got was to your see. First film. That was my film first film. Film festival. Yeah, yes, okay. that's right. You oh, know, so you so did I, the I red carpet, you did the whole thing? Yeah, I did it. with a bag. Yeah, that's right. You know what? Got to be there amongst everyone and yeah. see the directors and listen to the various um, individuals who would have worked on the on the films and stuff. Yeah. Uh, really give us their take on it and what and I experience. like about you know I know many of the festivals might have been disappointed the fact that you know they weren't able to have the in person festivals this year, but I'm sure they're enjoying the fact that they can have people from all over the world That's now right. join in who previously would not have been able to pay for a flight, accommodation, and all of that to get to a festival from wherever, to Trinidad and Tobago, or perhaps in Toronto or Cannes or whatever. Right. So the TT Film Festival going virtual means that it now opens up the opportunity for people from the diaspora and from wherever in the world wherever to join in and, and, and benefit from some of these films. No Caribbean people are wherever in the world. Yeah, <laughs> and they're all just over the eager place. for content. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You mm -hmm. know? All right, well, I think we're ready to go into the interview, Carrie. You want yes, to tell us more? Yes, and I'm going to be chatting with two film directors, the first of which, will, now we just saw that trailer there for Code Red, and that is a film by director Joel Moss. I'll also be chatting with Michelle Stevenson, who is the film director of Stateless. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. It's Good great morning. to be. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning, and I'm really excited to speak about those films. Joel, I'll jump to you first. Uh, you're the film director of Code Red, of which we just saw the trailer for. Tell us about the film. Well, the film is an action movie, and um, it deals with the issue of human trafficking, right? So we wanted to use the opportunity to showcase this particular issue in this vehicle because action films done like this is not something you see every day. So we knew that the film was going to get a lot of attention and we wanted to capitalize on that to bring some awareness to this particular issue. Right. So using the film as a medium to spread a message and to bring awareness as well. Uh, Michelle, yeah. I want to jump to you now. Your film is stateless and uh, it's going to have the Caribbean premiere at the virtual uh, Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. Tell us about the film. Oh, the film Stateless uh, takes place in the Dominican Republic. Um, it's the, uh, the island from which I'm from. I'm originally from Haiti. And it takes a deep dive uh, looking at um, the treatment of Dominicans of Haitian descent, the anti-Black discrimination that takes place there through what happened when the citizenship was ripped 
of Dominicans of Haitian descent. There are over 200,000 people today uh, in the Dominican Republic who no longer have a right to citizenship. So it follows the plight of a woman uh, by the name of Rosairis who really takes charge uh, on this journey to try to fight for the rights of her community there. What type of uh, what type of research you would have would you have needed to do to really get all the background information and the content for this film, Michelle? Well, the the triggering uh, element. I was, you know, I'm I'm part of the diaspora. I grew up in Canada and New York, um, but always with very strong links to um, Haiti, as well as learning about the stories of the collaboration and conflict and tension that exists between the two nations on the island. And when the uh, citizenship uh, decision came down, from one day to the other, Wait, people's birth certificates were no longer uh, valid. In 2013, I felt I felt really compelled to go to the island, spend some time, meet the people on the ground who are working uh, towards uh, recognizing the rights of Dominicans of Haitian descent. And when I, that research took about a year, actually. But the whole film was over a five-year period that we shot because it was really important to take a deep dive into the day-to-day -day experiences and also hearkening back to the history of the treatment uh, between the two communities that has existed, you know, since before a slave year, since the Haitian Revolution. Wow, that seems like quite a, a heavy and hard-hitting film there, touching on that topic. But I do want to jump across to Joel now and uh, find out a little bit more about Code Red. Now, you said it's on the topic of human trafficking. You know, what type of work and, and background research would have been done for that to really create and curate the content for that film? Yeah, we did a lot of research in terms of the human trafficking, in terms of the statistics and stuff like that, how it happens where Trinidad as a country, where we fall globally in terms of this particular issue, we wanted the cast to be appraised of that type of information so that they would they would translate that feeling genuinely. We wanted the movie to feel as real as possible. So we had to do a lot of research and we wanted to make sure that the cast was on board with everything in terms of bringing that human trafficking aspect through the movie. So, yeah. How much time uh, did it take you to produce the film from beginning to end? Wow. Um, about a year and three months. Just over a year. Wow. Just over a year. You know, like people see the finished product on screen and they have no idea how much work really goes into it. And, you know, so yeah. I just want to applaud you both for that. Jumping to Michelle now, um, the, film that, the film that you have done um, is making its Caribbean pre premiere, but it had premiered elsewhere before. Tell us about when the, fr the film first came out. Well, the film had its world premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival. Um, and it was Tribeca Film Festival was in April, so it was just after the pan well, just after the beginning of you know the the COVID nineteen pandemic, and so there was a lot of adjustment happening. Um, the interesting thing at Tribeca that was its world premiere, um, but because we didn't get a chance to have a screening, they've invited all of the twenty twenty films to the twenty twenty one festival, hoping in the hopes that we will have a, a public screening then. But I do want to uh, connect with what you were saying earlier about the fact that, you know, out of hardship comes a lot of um, opportunity. And I'm really excited to know through the Trinidad Film Festival, this is actually my second time here. Uh, it's one of my favorite festivals of all time. I was there a few years ago with a previous documentary of mine. And the opportunity that other people from across the Caribbean will be able to watch uh, stateless and other films, and Joel's film is really uh, um, uh, unprecedented, right? And that's what kind of the virtual aspect of it uh, allows us to do. And so um, I'm excited to to see how the region, you know, will react. Um, and for me, it's like a coming home in some ways right. because the film really speaks to the history of the Caribbean, speaks to our relationships as people, and the legacy, you know, that continues to uh, affect us of colonialism you know, genocide and uh, anti-Black um, hatred. Wow, yeah, you know, and uh, I, I really look forward to those, both those films being a part of the Trinidad Tobago Film Festival. I mean, there are pros and cons, but as you mentioned, one of the pros is that uh, people from all over the world are able to view this film now as a part of the festival, being that it has gone virtual, so uh, there's no longer the need right now, at least, to purchase a ticket, come to Trinidad um, itself, and, you know, and all the costs 
uh, to that. So I guess it makes it a little more accessible. Now, Joel, going across to you, um, this will be the world premiere of your film. What does it feel like? Joel? Yeah, well, um, I am very excited. I must say I was looking forward to that theater premiere, but I am very excited because we, I, I'm a big action movie buff, right? And um, we haven't seen a really, really, really good action movie since like Men of Grey. That was like thousands of years ago. <laughs> so I am very, very excited for people to see Code Red in its entirety and, you know, really feel what it is we put out there. I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited about that too. And I'm also excited about Stateless. And uh, before we go, Michelle, what's next for you? Oh, wow. What's next? Um, doing a number of different projects uh, at the moment. I'm producing a series for the public television in, uh, in the United States that's coming out. And it's uh, all self-shot footage. It's uh, kind of highlighting what's happening today in 2020 as uh, the pandemic and the racial uprisings that have taken place. So it's a snapshot across America uh, that will be coming out in January where all the footage is shot by people through their phones. And so we're weaving those stories into four hours um, and it'll be coming out on public television in the United States. All right, and, uh, and where can we find a trailer for Stateless? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. Where can we find a trailer for Stateless? The trailer for Stateless, where can we find it? Oh, on YouTube. Ah. You can find the trailer for Stateless on YouTube. All right, so uh, we'll definitely look that up. And Joel, um, what is next for you? Well, the cast right now is trying to toggle between doing a sequel for Code Red and doing wow. another script that I've written, maybe a sci-fi something. I would like to do something else. They also want to explore the idea of maybe doing a series of some sort because that too is unprecedented in terms of action movies and action content in Trinidad. So right now it's really up to the cast. All the content is already written. Right. So where we go from here is up to the cast, yes. All right, well, that's exciting news. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the Trinidad and Tobago uh, Film Festival and the virtual installment here for 2020. I want to thank you both for joining us this morning. Joel Moss, who is the film director thank of Code Thank you for Red. having me and Michelle Stevenson, film director of Stateless. And we look forward to much more work from you in the future. Thank you so much. All right, thanks Thank so you. much. All right, we're going to take in a few messages and come back. We still have more in the program, so stay right where you are.